Thank you, Matt. Amen. Appreciate uh, the introduction and uh, the privilege to come and minister the Word of God uh, here in Killeen. Second time back here, and so I uh, see many faces, uh, Felicia, London, they've come over to Australia before, Patrick, uh, friends of ours, and uh, no doubt, how I many know we're in a good fellowship? I've got friends in Killeen, amen, which means at the end of this revival, you've got a friend in Sydney, amen, that speaks Aussie. I know, some people say I speak too fast, but I realized over the time is that you guys have an accent, and I kind of like it, so I'm going to have fun this week, and so if I speak too fast, go back on live stream and just slow it down, right, <laughs> and then you draw it again, <laughs> amen, amen, glad that you're here. If you're visiting with us, I say in our church, uh, besides Jesus, you're the most important person here. Does that mean know the church exists, it's the only organization that exists for its non-members, that we're in here because of them out there. Amen. And so I want to encourage you here tonight, uh, this morning rather, uh, to open your heart and let's believe God for this week and especially this morning. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, if you get to the Bible, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse 29. We're going to read there in just a moment. Pastor Rosario asked me to somehow, Tony, you're going to have to try to spread your testimony throughout the whole revival because what happens is that when we advertise my story, people come, they come for the story, and then I've already said the story, and so then I'm, they're coming, they're hearing preaching, uh, but throughout the week, I'm going to try my best to sprinkle my stories and parts of it throughout the revival. But tonight is when I'm going to share my full story, so if you've invited people, I'd encourage you to uh, kidnap them tonight, amen. Bring them out tonight, and uh, we're going to have a good time. Amen. I've got to fight over a friend of mine. Danny, Danny, in the 1st of February 2020, he and his wife, Leela, they've got three children. One, Anthony, 13 years old, Angelina, 12, and Selena, which was 11. Along with their cousin, Shaka, were walking by the street going to get ice cream where they were hit by a drunkard driver. They were all killed in just one moment of time. I've got a photo, if you can get a photo of their family there. So in a moment, uh, their lives were shattered. The news came and jumped on it. It was on national TV. They had wrestled. They got phone calls from everybody. Only for the next day to come out on national TV and say, we forgive this man that killed our children. You know, the foundational principle of Christianity, how many know, is forgiveness. And what can start as a tragic circumstance can be transformed into something that can bring God glory. Everyone's pain has a purpose. Danny and Leela now run a foundation called I Forgive Day, where now they are going into parliament. They even challenge the natives, uh, uh, the aboriginals, to forgive the, the settlements, uh, the, those that actually came and took their land. Said, if we could forgive, you can forgive. Now, in the text we're about to read speaks of the challenge. And what's profound about it is that he's instructing us as Christians to take on the attributes of our creator, Jesus Christ. Now, the challenge of forgiveness is beyond positive psychology. We have to allow God to get involved. Because I'm talking about this morning something that is very difficult. In theory, it's, it sounds very easy. But let me know practically, when you are going through something that has been done wrongfully towards you, an injustice that might be perhaps you face, I mean, it's not as, as easy as it sounds to do. I want to preach a sermon simply that I've entitled, Forgiving What You Can't Forget. Ephesians chapter 4, let's read the word of God, verse 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Amen. Three things I want to look at this morning. Number one, let's look at the trap of feelings. Let me know we all got memories in life. 
We have fond memories that we'll want to reminisce. We come, we come together, we talk about good old times. Uh, We have these good memories that make us feel warm and fuzzy. But how many know there are memories that we try to forget and suppress? We try to forget about. But we are wired uh, as God would make us as emotional beings. And we cannot just ignore or erase uh, past memories, things that have happened to us, things that we've experienced in life that we'd rather just brush under the carpet. We can't just erase those memories. They are forever there. Now, I've got a picture of my baby brother. If you can put it up. Yeah, he's (laughs) he's 10 years younger than me. (laughs) Now, I grew up in a family of 10. My younger brother, I got another younger brother, two younger brothers, one older brother. But my father threw my younger brother, just come out of hospital, in a drunken rage to go fight my uncle. He threw him on the couch and gave him 20 staples in his head. My brother grew up um, resenting my father. No doubt, uh, you know, not only those things that have happened in life, uh, but my father was very violent. And not only my brother, but myself, we translated my father's absence, his violence, and his silence as rejection. We grew up to be very emotional, angry men. And this is something that is a byproduct of violence in the home. Now, you may be the same. I grew up with a lot of resentment towards my father. But we have to establish this morning is that forgiveness is not an emotional decision, but it is an act of the will. Because people make the error this morning, thinking, because I'm angry at them, that they cannot forgive. I mean, Ephesians 4, 26, the Bible says, be angry, but do not sin. You can take that photo down, thank you. See, because it's only natural for us to get upset and angry when something's wrong done to us. God's made us with a sense of justice within us. You know, we say something's happened to us that we inside of us say, no, that is not right. I mean, the the natural feeling is anger. That is not right. That is an injustice. We feel upset when we're misunderstood or perhaps uh, treated unfairly. And especially it's hard to process when you're unable to justify yourself or even give a defense feel lonely, isolated, trapped in a place where you feel like no one understands me. So the result there is an injustice that has happened is rightfully anger. But anger this morning does not have to result in bitterness. Many people say, I can't forgive because I'm still angry with the person. But listen, as long as you believe that, you'll continue to speak words that kill life rather than create life. Then the result is, is that you will never change. If you don't change your language, you won't change your mind. You're always going to be that way. You enslave yourself with these words. Because forgiveness is something you do. It's not something you feel. In our text, the Bible calls us to use words sparingly. To use words that build up, that benefit, rather than break down and destroy Verse 29, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good and necessary for edification, that he may impart grace to the hearers. Now, unforgiveness is a language that we speak. We know that words bring life or they bring death, they bring grace or they bring condemnation. And we know this is especially true in marriage. You use words, you always, you never. I mean, you know, that's just simply not true. (laughs) And you begin to go down these paths that these words bring into, bring up things that ought to be long gone under the blood. I mean, how many know we come into church with baggage? Other than my wife, no one's perfect here. We all come in, we've got our issues, we've got our problems. Amen. But how many know when we get saved, it just doesn't stop, everything gets fixed up there. You get saved, you spent 30 years as a sinner, you expect God to fix your life in one day. But these words can begin to trigger harmful memories, things that can begin to trigger thoughts and things that that have actually happened, that somehow, in your mind, you have buried it behind, that it's all done and dusted, but sometimes words can just bring them up again. Sermons on rejection and forgiveness. It's like picking at scabs 
things that are supposed to be healed, yet they're still bleeding. And if you don't deal with them, then those wounds can get infected, and then it can begin to cause issues and problems throughout your life. Now, if you don't change your language, you will not change your mind, and therefore you won't change your heart. Corinthians talks about strongholds that, have, that, that we can have. The Bible speaks about we have to pull down those strongholds. Why? Because then we begin to view life through these lenses. You never keep a good relationship. Never can keep a job. Always things are going wrong. Why? It's because you're allowing this to bleed throughout your life. Now, one man says forgiveness is a gift you give to yourself and to others. Let me know this morning, forgiveness does not mean forgetting. We just simply can't forget it. It just deals with the emotional hurt. So when people don't forgive, they trap themselves. It becomes their identity. They're unable to build beyond the bitterness that they feel. It's always a topic of conversation that comes up. There was one lady in our church who'd always talk about her husband. Always bad mouth, you know, he's out of church, he's in and out of church, but every time you will come in conversation, how are you going? You know where this is going. Every single time, it always goes back to, bah, 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 it's all bad, bah, 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 bah. It's like, now it's like, man, <laughs> we don't want to say, how are you going anymore? <laughs> so she goes there, we walk this way, <laughs> right? Because it becomes her identity, it becomes now the very topic of conversation. And the spirit takes hold, this bitterness then causes isolation and loneliness, becomes your identity. You know, growing up, I didn't understand all that I had to go through and all the things that have happened in my past, which was a cause to a lot of things that I had to do. And the decisions that I made were were really foolish. I've got a photo of me at 13 years old, 14 years old, if you can put that up. You know, here I am as a young little boy. And as I mentioned, just like my brother growing up, we grew up very angry. I didn't know and understand what was going on in my life. You know, you say the brain's not really fully developed at that stage, right? And here I am in and out of jail. You can go to the next photo and the next photo. As a young little boy, you know, here I am. I've got a chip on my shoulder. Try to act tough when really, in reality, I'm on the inside with bitterness and unforgiveness. Here I am with beautiful long hair. The next one. Yeah, I know you like that stuff. My sister, one time, I grew up with six sisters. I'll go into two of that more tonight. But she, they braided my hair, just like Snoop Dogg. And then I took it all out and was like, Poof, big afro. <laughs> I had fun with my sisters. But listen, growing up, I grew up very angry, very emotional, enslaved by how I feel. My feelings dictated everything. If I was angry, I'll let people know that I'm angry. Let me know if you live life based on your feelings, you're not going to get anywhere. Feelings are good passengers, but not good drivers. You can't allow them to drive your life, drive your decisions. You have to get a control on them. Otherwise, when you get saved, even then, it becomes a spiritual blockage and a barrier for growth. We all have, no doubt tonight, emotional scars that we harbor. That within our own soul, there are things that have been done, things that have been said, uh, violations, molestation, all these things uh, that you want to forget about. You begin to use them as something, as a license to feel this way. You become very toxic and self-indulgent. I don't care what people say. They don't understand what I've gone through. You can make excuses to be unfaithful to God, unfaithful to loved ones. Then it becomes very... Quickly self-destructive, saying things like, I don't, no one understands me. Because of that, I don't care what people say. I don't care what pastor says. I don't care what anyone says. And they press the self-destructive mode. And it begins to play out in their lives. Ultimately, it becomes a barrier to their freedom, only drinking poison, hoping the other person will die. That's what unforgiveness is like. So let's secondly consider then the test of faith. This is where the rubber meets the road tonight. See, God commands us to forgive. Now, He knows it's no easy road. Matthew 6, 14, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. 
But if you refuse to forgive the others, your father will not forgive your sins. Now, forgiveness is fundamental to the Christian faith. Yet, as Christians, people in church yet fail to exercise this in their very lives. But pastor, you don't understand what they did. They knew it and they still did it. I mean, that's very difficult to say to Jesus crying out on the cross. We, knew what, we know what he said. And we need to allow what he said to recalibrate our faulty thinking, thinking and reasoning. Luke 23, 34. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Now, we know that ought to bring perspective to our hurt, our plight, and whatever we are going through and someone did to us in, in comparison to what happened to Jesus. It ought to bring us some perspective. See, this morning, I'm not trying to discount what has happened in your life, but I want to point you to Jesus who understands your anger, who understands your pain, to, uh, that understands your injustice. Just because you've gone through things, maybe perhaps uh, you are on the right side, that still gives you no right to hold people hostage to your own bitterness. See, forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting. It just means it doesn't hurt anymore. You have to come to a place, you're going to have to let go and let God. So forgiveness this morning is exercising faith. So how do we do that, Pastor? Well, we need to choose to do so. Number one, forgiveness is a choice. It's not a feeling, but a decision. I may be hurt, upset, but I'm going to choose to trust God and release that person or that circumstance or that situation into the judgment of God because he knows what's right. I mean, we are limited in our perspective, right? We can see a situation. We can make a judgment based on our perspective, not knowing the full context. And we can seem right in our judgment if we are viewing it from one side. Now, how many you know in life and what we do in working with people, loving people, building a church, that's not always the case. Some people look in awe and can see that judgment and say, no, that's wrong, based on their perspective. How many you know sometimes some things we're not going to learn and understand until we get to heaven? That's why we're going to have to allow God, let it go, choose, God, you are the judge, not me. Romans 12, 19, beloved, I do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Now, this is the test of our faith. Faith says it is in God's hands. I'm going to leave it in God's hands. God is going to vindicate me. God is going to reveal the truth. Now, when? We don't know. <laughs> Did I say it took me 10 years to tell my father I forgave him? You know what happened? He just laughed it off. But that was okay because what I chose to do was to release him into God's judgment. Forgiveness is a decision to offer grace rather demanding justice because we are not in that place to do so. Forgiveness removes the barrier and lifts the penalty. It says, I'm going to extend grace and love and forgiveness. Now, unforgiveness is the emotional punishment that you put on yourself from what someone else has done. You're punishing yourself. You have to choose to let go and let go. So then forgiveness, secondly, it forms character within us. See, when you let go, you become more Christ-like. Right? We reject the fear. We reject the emotions they come along with everything that we're going through. We're saying, God, I'm going to trust you. Say yes to love. You know, I got robbed by my best friend, $40,000, as a 16-year-old. Made a lot of money. He came out of jail. I took care of him while he was in jail. He's seven years there. He came out. He didn't have to do nothing. I set him up. Gave him his own run. He's making money. He's got things. Then he, I mean, no, it's not, a, it's not an easy thing to forgive some of the hand, you know, someone that bites the hand that feeds them. So anyway, 
I go off, long story short, I leave my safe at home. He's the only one that knows about it. I come home and it's all gone. So what do you do? Well, you do what anyone else does. You take him and you make an example out of him. Fast forward, I get saved. Now, how many know, when you get saved, you need to be different. (laughs) Amen. Your belief needs to change your behavior. Amen. Otherwise, you're just religious. You know, we don't want religion. So here I am. I'm at the mall in the food court in front of McDonald's looking at what to order. It's funny. We know what's there, but it's still taking a while to order. Then these two big guys, like steroid munchers, you know, standing in front of me, blocking my view. I'm standing beside them, looking at it, and then I look to them. Guess who it is? It's old mate. It's my old friend. The one I made an example of. He turns around. He sees me. He starts shaping up. uh, And so I'm I'm like, I'm I'm done. These guys just, just, just squash me. I put up my hands and said, bro, I'm going to let you know everything you did to me. I'm going to tell you, I forgive you. But I'm asking you now, everything I've done to you, I want you to forgive me. You know what it is? His jaw dropped. He's like, by the way, would you come out to church? He's like, <laughs> I mean, no, you ought to change when you get saved. Forgiveness builds character. First, uh, 2 Timothy 1.7, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. See, when we love, we risk being hurt again, and again, and again. But this is what develops us as Christians, as children of God, as disciples. We are called to love without reservation. This is the hallmark to our faith. Love your enemies and do good to those who despitefully use you. You know, when I read that, I'm like, no, I don't want to love my enemies. I want to kill them. Now that's challenging. God says, what's the point of loving someone that loves you? Sinners do that. But love your enemies. Do good to those who use you. Really? Now that's a challenge to our morality. Now that's something hard to do. Well, what are you saying, Pastor? Just allow people to push you around and walk all over you, use you as a doormat to use and abuse you? Unfortunately, yes. How many times do I need to forgive a brother? Seven times seven. Well, I can't do mass, but that's a lot. One man says the best index of a person's character is how he treats people who can do nothing good and how he treats people who can't, can't fight back. You and I here are called as Christians, born again to be Christ-like and be willing to forgive, release people into God's judgment. What this does and challenges us to do, thirdly, is to exercise compassion. This is the challenge for you and I. That is the enlargening of the heart, the enlargening of our faith. Because if you can't forgive this morning, you can't move forward. You become a stillborn Christian, born into the kingdom, but not able to grow beyond your bitterness. Now, I remember reading or actually watching a YouTube clip about an an African pastor who actually died and went to hell. Like, he's the pastor, he's in hell. And he's questioning, he's like, why am I here? And he tells the story, he says, he's speaking to Jesus, and Jesus says, hey, you had some bitterness in your heart for your wife. I thought about that. Tiny root of bitterness kept him from heaven. I mean, oh, God's serious about the forgiveness that he offers us, and the challenge of the forgiveness that we need off other people. We must forgive those who hurt us. Forgiveness allows you to view life through Christ's eyes. Hebrews 12, 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness with our to which no one will see the Lord, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God 
lest any root of bitterness spring up and cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. So let's close this morning and talk about the triumph for, of forgiveness. My mate Danny, he now has been numbers of years, and now he had to go and visit the man that killed his children. He's sentenced to do 28 years. He's in jail. So here, Danny goes in. He's telling me, Tony, you know what? Everything in me came around to the day I did not want to go in. But as he began to go in, he began to speak to God. The Holy Ghost came. It was there in the cell. And this man, his name's Samuel Davison, he came down and fell at the feet and on his knees before Danny. At his, at his feet and shoes, weeping, said, forgive me, forgive me. Danny got down on his knees, began to hug the man, said, look, I forgive you. Today, they're actually friends. Today, they're making plans to actually tour jails and talk about forgiveness. Because how many of you know this morning, love covers a multitude of sins? 1 Peter 4, 8, above all, have fervent, unfailing love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins. It outlooks unkindness and unselfishness, seeks the best for others. And that's what the church of Jesus Christ is called to do. Remember, we are in here for them out there. They will say things. There are things that you will experience in your life, in your ministry. Sometimes uncalled for. I mean, oh, God knows best. Forgiveness looks to the victory of the cross. It is forgiveness that allows our Savior to come in and say, hey, my life laid down for your sins. If you're able to do this, we'll begin to shine through your life uh, and help other people. God's called us to love the unlovable. Easy to say, hard to do. But our text gives us very practical things. Verse 32, and be kind to one another. Mm. I mean, I can just drop the mic right there. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. What more needs to be said? Oh, but, 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 but. Say but, but, but to Jesus hanging on the cross. We can make excuses. We can justify our injustice, and no doubt, I'm not trying to downplay that, uh, but in contrast to what Christ had done for us, uh, it, is, it is nothing. Love is also a language. But if we hold on to the unforgiveness and bitterness, the Bible says we grieve God. Verse 30 of our text, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. By whom you were sealed for the day of redemption, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. We must repay evil with good. Victory comes when you extend grace where it's not deserved. This is Christ has done for us. Now, learning to love is very difficult. Once we've been hurt, and no doubt, I'm not going to call for a, a raise of hands, there's no doubt a, a church that is 40 years old, you've experienced some stuff, some violations, maybe perhaps a, some rebellions, things that have gone on, people that you've cared for, loved for, and for them to turn around and bite you back, speak bad about you, do certain things uh, towards you. But yet here we are, we're called to love them. God, do you understand? Yes, he does understand. He's calling us to extend the grace. I want to close with this story. My father passed away in 2018 on my sister's birthday. She was in jail along with my other baby brother. He was in another jail. Uh, but then he died on my sister's birthday while she was inside. And the grateful thing that I had is that my father was... It was a violent man. It was a drug, you know, an alcoholic. All his life was a woman abuser. Resented my father. 
But at the end of his life, I'm grateful that on his deathbed, I was able to pray with him and lead him to Christ. You know, I say I never knew my father, but I got all eternity to get to know him. My sister, I remember going to visit her on her birthday. I haven't slept. I'm tired. I'm breaking the news to her. I booked to see her. I haven't seen her for a year. She feels like the black sheep of the family. She's, you know, she feels everyone's against her. I went to go and visit her. The governor says, sorry, Tony. She's, uh, she doesn't want to see anyone but your dad. I said, if you, she doesn't want to see, tell her dad's dead. If she wants to come to the funeral, I'll help her. Governor says, sorry, Tony, she's, uh, she tried to escape jail a couple of months ago, and it was all over the news. I haven't seen her for a year. So there I am. I go back into the jail car park, and I Google it. Sure enough, I can play that. An inmate in has been rescued the after a failed prison break in Sydney. The woman became stuck in the barbed wire coils of Silverwater Jail this afternoon. A cherry picker was used as guards and medics cut her down. They then patched up her wounds. It's understood she did not need treatment in hospital, but obviously has some explaining to do. It is, he's an idiot. Happens to be my sister. I come from one jacked up family, man. My younger brother, my baby brother, was scared to come out to his job. And, uh, yeah, he had held the coffin with handcuffs down the aisles of the church to go bury my father. You know, I preached at my father's funeral to all my family. I would say half of them raised their hands and gave their lives to Jesus. I wanted everyone to bow their heads. You know, the challenge this morning is something that we've all experienced. Some level or another, some are dis different capacities in that sense. Uh, violations that have happened in life, maybe you're young. It's things that have happened, things that your parents have said, things that they have not said. Maybe you here, you never heard them say, I love you. Listen, there are things that happen to us as children growing up, circumstances in life that we cannot explain, that we cannot control. Violations that have caused us to, to step back towards relationships of what could be a good friendship. You allow this unforgiveness, this bitterness, uh, and you don't open your heart to anybody anymore. Listen, when I got saved, I came into a church uh, just like this. People were nice to me. I didn't understand why I was taking me back. Uh, and because of my bitterness and my anger in me, I didn't allow people to come close to me. You're just going to hurt me again. I'm not going to let anyone hurt me. This is what happens when we grow. We don't deal with the things that have happened in our lives. We allow it to take hold of our hearts, our spirit. It begins to dictate our relationships, our employment. Things happen in our lives and wonder why. Why can I not ever hold a job or even get a job or have relationships that are positive? You've never dealt with it. But I encourage you this morning, you allow God to, to deal with the scars that you have. See, that scab slowly begins to dry out. That scab begins to eventually fall off. Yes, it does take time. But just because you're angry, you still feel the emotional scars. Uh, doesn't mean you can't forgive. It's a decision you have to make every day. So that scab falls off. And listen, when that falls off, that skin is harder. You're tougher. You're better. You need healing this morning. First things first, you need to repent of your sins. You're visiting with us. God's got his finger on your chest. On his heart, he's knocking at the door of your heart. He loves you so much. He knows the violations, the things that have happened in your life. But God's a gentleman. He doesn't force His love on you. If you want to go to anyone that understands, that is God. Jesus saw you in your brokenness. 
saw you in your blood lying there. He's reaching out to you this morning. Would you come to him? Would you allow him to forgive you and help you? While every head is bowed, no one looking around, that's you. My friend, all you need to do is repent. Turn away from your sins. God, I need a second chance. I need you in my life. God, if you can change Pastor Hawang, I want you to change me. I need you to heal my broken heart. That's you this morning. You're willing to repent of your sins. While every head is bowed, no one to look around. Would you lift up your hand nice and high this morning? God sees that hand. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. God bless you. Yes. Thank you. At the front. Thank you. Thank you at the back. Is that your hand? God, is that your hand? God's going to help you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. God's knocking at the door of your heart. Listen, and He wants to forgive. He wants to heal. He wants to restore. Our God is a restorer. He can take what is broken and put it together and make you better than you were before. Would you be honest with your, with your hurt this morning? Give Christ your life. Lift up your hand. Join these others this morning. God's knocking at the door of your heart. Your heart is pounding this morning. That's God knocking. Put down your pride. Allow me to come in. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm going to heal you. Would you lift up your hand? Pastor, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe you're backslidden. Thank you at the back. Maybe you're backslidden. You once served God, but today you're far away from Him. You've lost the fire in your heart. Or something along the way has happened. Bouncing in and out. You're wrestling through with the offenses that have happened. This morning, you want to leave it at the altar. God, I need you to help me. If that's you, would you lift up your hand? Join these others this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we need you in this place. God, minister to hearts this morning. My final call this morning, backslider, unsaved. He loves you so much. But love is not a love unless you have the freedom to choose. Choose Christ this morning. Choose repentance. Choose heaven. He will forgive you, heal you, set you back on solid ground this morning. Backslider, how about it? Unsaved, my final call. Allow God to heal you. This morning, would you lift up your hand? Join these others this morning. My final call. Do it now. Thank you. Glory to God. You lift up your hand. I want you to look at me. You mean that? You mean that, sister? Amen. You mean that? Amen. I want you to come. 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 Meet me at the front. Sister, come. I need some ladies to come and pray. Amen. Just find a, find a place at the altar. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Someone's going to come pray with you. Amen. Sister at the back, come. I want to pray with you. Glory to God. Amen. I need a sister to come. Church, I want to open up the altars for a time of prayer. Let's all stand this morning. Once you come, come, come down, come pray. Sister at the back, you lift up your hand. I want you to come. Amen. Just find a place here. Sister's going to pray with you. Glory to God. Amen. Sister at the back, come. You lift up your hand. Sister, come. I want to pray for you. Come. I want to pray for you. Amen. She's going to come with you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's speak to God this morning. Father, we need you in this place. God, I'm asking for your grace, your hand and power. God, to be at work. God, move and minister in the power of the Holy Ghost. God, speak and do what I cannot do. God, work upon the heart. Bring forth forgiveness, God, understanding. God, that you see all things, that you will vindicate. God, that you know the truth. Father, I pray, God, help us. God, I'm asking for your grace this morning. Minister at these altars. Speak to God this morning. God, you see my plight. You see what is going on in my life. Things that have happened in my life. God, I'm releasing into your judgment. God, those who have hurt me, has offended me. God, we need you. We need you in this place, God. Yes, Jesus, I pray, bring healing. God have right of way. Minister at these altars, Lord. Father, we thank you. 
We give you glory, God. Jesus, move, God. Father, minister in the power of your spirit. God, your grace, God, I pray, bring restoration. God, bring you healing, Lord. God, I pray, strengthen your church. God, have right of way, God, in every heart. God, oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, minister. God, of these hearts, God. Hallelujah. You know, God's challenging some people here. While every head is bowed, you know, God has a plan. Sometimes that plan involves some pain. I hate to say, but sometimes pain can be your friend. Though you don't understand it. We will never understand it. We don't like it. We try to avoid it. God builds us in through circumstances that happen. Yes, it is hard. Yes, it breaks us. But God has a plan, all things. When he says all things, that means all things come together for the good. For those who will love God, this is the caveat. For those who love God and accord according to his purpose. I want to pray with you this morning. No doubt, maybe perhaps this morning. And let me explain to you. When I got saved, I automatically forgave my dad. But it was 10 years that I had to, I had to feel the need to actually tell him. I'm glad I did because while well, he was still alive, even though I didn't get the response that I wanted, something lifted off me. I really forgave him in my heart. But I felt the need. I just needed to tell him, release him. This began to lift something in my soul. Maybe perhaps that's you this morning. Maybe that is an uncle. Maybe that is your mom. Maybe that is someone, your friend. Been best friends for a while and something's happened now, you're not no longer friends. I always say that friendship end that ends never really begun. And I thank God for the church because it's in the church where we learn to get offended. We learn how to get forgive. We learn how to wash each other's feet. And just get offended and leave. Now, this is in God's house. God's able to heal us, give us fathers, give us uncles, give us aunties in the church. Amen. Give us children in the church. They were able to care for and love. You've been hurt. You're finding wrestling through your emotions that you feel like you can't forgive them. Listen, forgiveness is not a, a feeling. We're just going to have to choose this morning. I want every head bowed. I want to lead you in a prayer. God knows who they are. You know who they are. And this morning, something I can't do for you is release them into God's judgment. From that point, you need to do whatever you need to do and call them, text them, whatever it needs to happen, you release them completely to God. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for salvation. You've given your life for me, suffered for me, and died for me. This morning I choose to forgive. I release them into your judgment. You know who they are. And this morning I'm asking for your grace. Give me the strength to forgive. I choose this morning love. I'm asking for your grace to help me. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God praise this morning. Father, this morning I'm asking God, break the chains of unforgiveness. God, I uproot it right now and cast it down in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus sets us free. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Amen. I want to pray this morning for married couples. If you're married, I want you to come with your spouse. Uh, if not, your spouse is not here. I want you to come and stand with them. Amen. 
Glory to God. How many know strong families make up strong churches? Strong marriages make up strong churches. I you to come, man, everyone's married here. It's two singles in the church. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. There are some marriages here. I want you to come, make, make some room. Come step, step forward just a little bit, make some room here. There are some marriages here that you haven't totally let go. Every time your spouse does something, your husband some, says something, rather than forgive and overlook, you just allow it to reinforce your ideas. Oh, I knew it, it would just do it again. She would just do it again. And you allow this to reinforce the false no, notion that he's never going to change, she's never going to change. Now, if you're doing that, you need to stop it. You allow God to help you let that go. God's going to bless your marriage. He's going to help you. Rather than just keep them bringing stuff up. No doubt, pastors mentioned before, my wife's not uh, st- historic- hysterical. She's historical. <laughs> My point being, you've got to forget things that have happened in the past. How many know some things you just need to allow under the blood? Move forward, allow God's presence to come and bless your marriage. I want you to bow your head with me. To hold your hand of your spouse if they're here. Those that are here, that your spouse is not saved. I want to encourage you this morning that your behavior is going to be what draws them. Not your words, your behavior. In for forgiving, you allow God to use you, to shine His light into your marriage. God's able to help, restore, save them. We're going to pray this morning. I want you to lift up your hand, lead you in a prayer, and then we're going to praise God this morning. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for salvation. I thank you for your love that is unfailing. I thank you for my spouse. And I thank you that you have given me a blessing. This morning I choose to overlook transgression. Words that are spoken. Things that I've done. Things that are not done. I choose faith. You're able to help me. Bless my marriage. Bless my life. Help me to be a blessing to those around me. Starting with my spouse. I thank you for them. I choose to release them. From everything that is, they've done. And everything that is said. I thank you that you are the judge. My Lord. My God. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's give God praise this morning. Father, we thank you. God, we give you glory and honor. God, I thank you. God, bless them and help them this morning. Father, have right of way. God, minister. God, your word. Help them, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister with the glasses there, I just want to let you know that God's hearing your prayer. Right? And although maybe sometimes it feels like, oh God, are you hearing anything going on? He hears your prayer. Right? And so sometimes it's just, the, the scripture I'm getting is be still, know that I'm God. Right? And allow God to be God. Sometimes, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wrestle because we want to, things to move ahead quickly. And, uh, you know, we try to, you know, get in control and some things. But God's like, no, 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 no. Let me, I'm in control. Just allow me to do what I need to do. Although we don't understand it, just keep praying because God hears your prayer. Right? And even though it feels like you, it's, it's just, it's not going anywhere. It's just words to the ground. It's not going into the ground. God's hearing it. Right? And he sees your tears. And listen, he's, you know, he's bottling them up. Right? There is a tear bottle there. God is bringing them up. He's, he's storing it up. Right? And you pour that out on the feet of Jesus. Jesus, you see my suffering. 
You see the things that have gone on in my heart, my life. And you allow God to be God. Okay? And in that time, God will respond. All right? I know it's hard, uh, but you trust God and allow Him to move on His timing. You just need to be still. Keep doing what you're doing. Pray and allow God to help you. Amen? Father, in Jesus' name, bless our sister. God, I pray, cover her, God. Give her a heart that trusts in you, God, I pray. Father, enlarge and Father, her heart, her faith in you, God, I pray. Help her. God, bless her this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. God, I give you glory. God, I give you honor. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister at the back there. You? Yeah. I just want to let you know that you're stepped into a, a, a place that, that God, God's help is here. Church is like a hospital and we're all sick. Right? When we step in, God, God, God has, uh, ha- has people and will set people around you that would help you. Right? It's like a body, you know. All the, when, they, when there's a cut on the body, the, all the white blood cells come around begin to bring healing. And I want to encourage you this morning that you've been ripped off before. But God would never rip you off. Wherever there's people, there's going to be problems. They're just, it's just a given. Right? But God sees. And uh, he, he pulls back the curtains. He's like, man, I, I see everything. And I want to encourage you that you're in the church. We've got, we've got real problems. We're real people with real problems, don't we? Uh, but we serve a real God. Can you say Amen. God's able to heal. God's able to bring healing to your, to your life. Set people around you to help you. If you allow, open your heart. Yes, you've been hurt before. Things have gone on. Allow, allow God. Allow Him just to rip, rip, rip open your heart. Get into the center, the heart of hearts, all right? Our heart is like an onion, you know, it's just different layers of, of hurt and betrayal and it's like, stay away from me. But if you allow God to get into the heart of hearts, he's going to heal you, he's going to help you. And that's going to in turn, listen, look at me, it's going to help other people through you. You receive that? And let's pray for our sister. Father, in Jesus' name, God, I pray your hand and grace God upon her. God, I pray, bring revelation God, in understanding this morning, bless her and keep her. Shita la la basondo, in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise one more time. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Travis. Uh, young man, I want to tell you that you're on the right track. If you continue to push forward, right, and take it to the next level, God's going to use your life. He's going to bring people, young people in. Is it is as you allow God to use you and shape you like an arrow, right? He's going to stretch you. He's going to put a, 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 a head on you a sharp, and sharpen that. Right, but that's a process. You don't have to allow yourself to be open. Allow yourself to be spoken to. Allow yourself to be corrected. Allow yourself to ask questions. And that you, you do that at your age right now. What God's going to do in the next four years? You, he's going to blow your mind. He's going to blow your mind. But run with God. Don't let anyone say, "Oh, because you're young." No, 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 no. Jeremiah said he was young, right? God used him mightily. If you apply yourself to the word, if you apply yourself and develop your relationship with your elders, right? You, choose, you look around and you say, I want to be like that guy. I want to pray like that guy. Pastor, what do I need to do? Prepare me. God's going to prepare you and excel, accelerate your growth and discipleship. You receive that? Amen. Let's pray for our brother. Father, in Jesus' name. God, I'm asking, Father, let this word, Father, God, trigger within his heart a desire, a fire, God, in his heart, God. I pray, birth, God, uh, God, a hunger for your word. 
God, that he would stand and preach. Uh, God, in dominion and authority. God, bless him. Anoint him. Set his heart on fire for you. In Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Amen. Appreciate you coming. And again, if you're visiting with us uh, here this morning, I'm going to be sharing my testimony tonight, my the full story. And then uh, I'm going to sprinkle other stories throughout this, the week. And so I'd encourage you to come back, bring some people. We're going to believe God for radical conversions. We believe in radical conversions. Amen. God saved my life, man. He can save me. He can save anybody. Any boldy. <laughs> We're going to have a good time, man. We're going to have a good time. All right. And so uh, everyone understood me? I wasn't too fast. Go back and live stream, maybe get some subtitles. You want to fight? <laughs> We're going to have a good time. Amen. Uh, glory to God. Let's give God praise.